G'day, sorry, if you just tuned in, uh, I was having a few connection difficulties, um, so I've changed it around. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everyone's watching this and it's okay. If you can just let me know uh, if you have any issues again, um, and I'll try and fix it. But I think I was on my phone before and now I'm on the iPad and hopefully it's a little bit clearer and a little bit easier. But please tell me if, if it's still a bit clunky and whatever and I'll try again later. But, so what I wanted to talk, to, talk today about was... Um, uh, being you, you know, the power of investigating your own inherent worth and, and living up to it, your own inherent value and living up to that. Um, and, and the three kind of P things that, that I, uh, words starting with P, that I, uh, that I bullshit my way through and try and, uh, and try and be somebody else often in is as a professional, as a uh, parent and as a person. And I mentioned uh, in the ill-fated um, live broadcast just then that I sometimes I have, or usually I have bullet points here to guide me, you know, three or four bullet points to guide me through these Facebook live broadcasts. But today I haven't even got that because I thought even that was a, um, a display of, you know, not being myself, of not of not just delivering my my, my message here and my content. Um, uh, thanks, Greg. Um, you know, delivering my content validly and authentically as myself. So the three the three areas that I sometimes try and bullshit through and, and be someone else, the first one is professionally. You know, I get uh, I get compared um, a lot to, oh, not a lot, I get compared a bit to um, other people who are producing similar kind of content about, you know, resilience and kindness and, uh, and sort of inner strength and even the social media stuff and the business and the marketing content that I do also gets a bit, you know, compared that way to other people. So... Um, you know, it's difficult in that time to not judge myself that way. And, and, and you know, I compare myself much harder to these people than, than you will, than, than my, people who are watching my stuff will. But, you know, I if I try and be Gary Vaynerchuk, if I try and be Brené Brown, if I try and be Oprah Winfrey, like Oprah Winfrey, for fuck's sake, like how am I going to be any of those people? How am I going to produce a, a content that not is as good as them, but as authentically as me and try to be them? That's the, that's the challenge. That's the problem is that I can produce content that I think is good and I think is valuable and it might be, and you might, and then you can judge that, you know, you can judge it compared to other people's stuff. So, so just being me professionally is is really important to me. You know, I'm doing a tour of shows starting in April that are all about, you know, thinking better and being different. Um, sorry, thinking different and being better. And well, it's both it's probably true. But um, you know, if you if I don't if I get up there and, and having done only really um, national tours before around business and marketing stuff, there's some imposter syndrome. The little monkeys on his bike up there telling me you're no good, mate. They're going to find out. So if I if I go into that with that kind of thinking or with the thinking that I want to be somebody else or I want to be a better version of myself that other people will accept, then it's going to fall in the ass. And and you know I don't I don't want that. I want to be able to produce good content that is still you know perceived to be my own content professionally. So that's the first thing, that's the, the, the first kind of important one that I have to check my head all the time and say, am I, am I being me? You know, am I being true? Am I being authentic? Am I being real? Am I being transparent? And if I'm not, then I'm just one of the other crew who are pushing out shit that they don't believe in or, or don't think that they're worth offering, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is then as a parent, um, you know, I hear, so I have, I have, for the people who don't know, I have four, four small children. We have a six, five, three, and a two-year-old. <laughs> and, um, and so I spend a lot of time at preschool and primary school talking to other parents and listening to other parents. And, you know, if you think you've left high school when you have a parent, when you have a child and become a parent, think again, because it's the most potentially competitive bullshit environment where, you know, some parents, not, not all of them by any stretch, but there's parents who are living through their kids, living vicariously through their kids. They're, they're pushing them hard there, which is fine, right? But, but unrealistically then representing their children to other parents who are in these classes or in, their, in these kids' social networks, you know? Oh, my kid is now on reading list, whatever, and my kid is playing the violin now, you should hear my kid sing, you should hear whatever, you know, like, and a lot of it's this passive aggressive bullshit on Facebook too, which is just annoying as another parent, like, I often think like, God, 
can't you see what you're doing here, you know, to your, to your parent, to your kid, as well as yourself as a parent? God, I'd probably do it too, right? I, I, I can, I mean, I love my kids. I love my kids so much sometimes that it physically hurts me, right? But they drive me mental as well. And I, and I get disappointed in them and disappointed by them. And that's always a reflection of my own shit, right? When that happens, but it still happens. You know, I can, I can, I see their drawings and I hear them singing and I hear them spelling and I can see their homework and, and I, sometimes I get, despite myself, sometimes I get really competitive and think, well, you know, you're, you're the, you're the funniest kid in the class, aren't you? Or who's, I said to my, my five-year-old who's just started kindergarten two weeks ago, um, who's, who's the smartest kid in your class? Are you the smartest kid in the class? You know, we were going through his spelling list and he's like, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? And then it kind of dawned on me that it wasn't so much that he didn't know, he just didn't care who the smartest kid in his kindergarten class was. That was me caring. You know, so I think I have to check myself a lot about that because otherwise I won't be me as a parent. I'll try and be somebody else as a parent. And, you know, I don't, I, that's not going to help my kids and it's certainly not going to help me and it's certainly not going to help my, my partner be a better parent or be a better co-parent with me or any of that. You know, if I'm myself, I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to make plenty of mistakes as a parent and I already have, right? But, if, but they'll be my mistakes and they'll, I'll learn from them as my growth, not as somebody else's. And the third thing that I, which is the most important one really, that I think we all sort of suffer sometimes with trying to be someone else or not being happy with being ourselves. And the third P is person. You know, um, if you're trying to be somebody else, or if you're even trying to be a representation of yourself that somebody else needs, wants, expects you to be, then that is always going to be your downfall. You are never going to be happy, you are never going to be accepting or accepted. And it's such a powerful thing to try and to want to be someone else, to want to have someone else's money, someone else's home, someone else's pool, someone else's car, someone else's job, someone else's partner, someone else's children, someone else's address. And often we want to be these other people because we think that they're life is all sunshine and lollipops, or they've got all their shit together, or they're really smart, or they're really successful, or they're really whatever. And it's only very recently that I've realized, that I've really come to realize, that they don't know what they're doing either. The people that you are emulating, or admiring, or wanting to be, or pretending to be, they've all got stuff going on too. I would sit, uh, you know, for days in the past, and and just compare myself to somebody else and say, why have I got so much shit going on? Why do I have the mental health struggle? Why do I have the addictive behaviors? Why do I do these things? And, and this guy, who's my friend or who I hardly know, he's got everything. He's got it all sorted, right? But the truth is, he's just as fucked up as me. And we all are. But you, you, you lose perspective of that when you try to be someone else or when you just try not to be yourself. And sometimes it's really hard to sit with yourself. For me, I should speak in the eye, for me, it's sometimes it's really hard to sit with myself. Really hard for me to be me. I don't love it, right? And, and sometimes I fucking hate it. But whilst ever I'm trying to be someone else or trying not to be myself, I'm actually robbing the world and my family and my friends and everyone who's connected to me of the chance to be with me, which is desperately sad, you know, regardless of whether I'm a good guy or a shit guy, if I'm a, you know, a good dad or a terrible dad, if I'm whatever, people want to be with me because they want to be with me. They don't care about the shit that I care about. They don't judge me the way that I judge me. And, and so all I have to do is show up and be me. Make no apologies for it, but just be me. And, and eventually that me might be a different, better, dare I say it, version of who I am right now. But honestly, other people probably don't care. If you are going through your life as I do, 
thinking as a professional, as a parent, or as a person, that I would rather be somebody else, or I'm going to pretend to be someone else, or I look at that guy and think he's got all his shit together, I wanna be him, I wanna have what he has, he's probably doing the same thing. And he's probably doing, potentially doing, the same thing about you. We've gotta be ourselves, that is plenty. There's enough to worry about, and there's enough stress, and there's enough stuff to deal with in the world when you're just trying to be me, trying to be you. Like far less trying to be somebody else because you're never gonna be that other person because you never know what shit they've got going on. I hope that today Sorry, I hope that today you can find your kindness, find some of your kindness for yourself as well. Um, and be you, that is truly plenty. I'd love you to share this if you think someone else could get something from it. Um, and I'd love your comments below as well if, if you can relate to some of this stuff. And maybe you can't, and that'd be great too. If, if you are 100% unapologetically and really happy about being yourself, I would love to hear that too. Because um, that's not me. And uh, maybe I can learn from you, which would be awesome too. Have a great day wherever you are in the world and um, find your kindness. I'm Nick Bowditch. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.